Saturday, 3 November. This is what greets me first thing in the morning. Up in the skies, blue, 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 blue skies. There's our moon setting in the west. Remnant of a trail. And another one coming overhead. I want to try to grab this one rather quickly. It's probably a 737. That's him. And so if this is what I'm waking up to, already I can see some rippling uh, right in here. And this guy is definitely persisting. So we're going to have an active day. Very much going to have an active day. There's two more trails behind me off to the north. So, uh, Delta. And he's in descent. Absolutely in descent. You can tell by the engine. You can listen. You can hear it. So the trail will be higher behind me and lower ahead of me. So that's generating some kind of slope. Some kind of slope that the waves they're using to play with the atmosphere will adhere to or be guided into. And so, one, two, three. Good morning. Coming up on last quarter of moon. This is full moon that kicked those tides with Sandy into something rather monstrous. As it sets to the west in the constellation Gemini. A bit of a trail. And then another one farther off to the South coming on in. FedEx. Let's see if this trail gets sticky here in a bit. Now hearing him. Can't really tell if it's like a DC-10 variant or it's just a two-engine pup. But I'm just seeing two, two exhaust streams. He's definitely low. This trail isn't nearly as sticky as, as the previous ones. All right, we just looked outside uh, at some of those trails flying overhead, and I am up here in the San Luis Valley on the eastern side up against the Sangres, which is this, the great uh, San Luis National Park is in this little notch here. Clouds off to the south, notice that they're littered with trails through here, and the visible imagery which we are looking at now, you can see those as well. Uh, there's other trails, the San Juans, you get north across the rest of the spine of the Rockies, the Continental Divide into southern Wyoming, trails as well trails as we head over into into, um, into uh, the Dakotas, but it's this little cluster that I'm probably going to have float overhead later on in the day, and you can see the many, many trails in here as well. Let's do a timestamp real quick, 1545Z, which is 945 Mountain Time on the 3rd of November. Uh, we've got a, uh, a weakish storm, but one developing off the coast. This is kind of a, a curious shape. We've got you know, vertical clouds and then of course horizontal next to them well, maybe not of course but that's what what's there in texas they get some weird stuff down there they just get some really weird stuff um into oklahoma this is where i want to go i'm going to flip over to the eastern view of this and you can see the thick trails through new mexico across the panhandle of texas amarillo delhart dumas uh, into gauge oklahoma into texas all the way into into louisiana extending into illinois and then clouds and a few snow showers across the Dakotas. Probably some trails up in here where, as well. We would be beginning to see the shadows of the trails from the relatively low morning sun angle 
on those clouds below. Florida, looks like we've got one running uh, the spine of the state, if there is such a thing. And then, of course, the profound rippling across the Potomac, Northern Virginia, and then all kinds of ripples, which uh, are normally considered to be associated with mountain wave clouds. But there's something else going on here. There's just something else going on here. And you can't attribute those to topography. You just can't. At least not anymore. There was a time you probably could, but those days are now past. I want to go to the animation so we can see how these trails are forming across uh, Oklahoma, the Sooner State, and into in, in Missouri, and then those are uh, advancing into uh, in, in, into Arizona. Still have a low right in through here. It's kind of kind of just standing still, but this event is what they're engineering. We've got one more animation. You can see some of the clouds, some of the trails are not nearly as, as pronounced in California, but they're there and then across uh, the lower Colorado River Valley. On the forecast map, it's this low. This is what they're playing with, this rather subtle, innocuous low that's over the desert southwest. Still, uh, remnants of Sandy keeping some showers in place across New England. Uh, on, on Saturday morning and then this is responsible for the clouds across the Dakotas. We'll step ahead 12 hours. This doesn't move much, this doesn't move much, but this is going to evolve. It's go, actually going to weaken out. Ridge off the west coast of the U.S. Go step out another 24 hours. This ridge begins to grow, begins to swell, and in doing so the flow over it is going to sharpen up. It's going to sharpen up. And by Sunday night, nice summertime ridge off California, Oregon, and Washington, Oregon. They'll have some gorgeous weather. They had a crappy summer on the coastal areas of BC, Washington, Oregon. They're going to have some nice weather now. Some strong onshore flow, all, although in, uh, on Vancouver Island. But it's this sharpening. This has me a little bit curious because every single model run this impulse right here that we see Monday morning across Nebraska, Kansas, uh, Missouri, and Iowa sharpens up. And it was this kind of event that uh, folded Sandy back in ashore. So I mean, there we are on, on uh, the Tuesday, actually Monday evening. Let's step back to the, the longer range outlook. Let's go out six days back into the vorticity. We want to come back to the 70 or to our panel. This is where we left on the other page. And we can see this low. Now, Every run I've been looking at for the last couple of days has sharpened up this trough here. It is sharper. And sharper means deeper. Sharper means more energy curling in. Sharper means a stronger hook. And so we might be looking at another wet, not, not necessarily north, nor'easter event, but this is something to watch out for towards the end of next week. And then maybe finally some rains into, into crispy, crispy, dry California and Nevada. That might happen by the end of next week as well. I just showed you on the satellite imagery uh, all those clouds over to Mexico and uh, south of where I am. This is kind of what it looks like from my driveway. And it's a fairly uniform cloud shield, but littered with, littered with trails. They're keenly observing something going on here. And then when we uh, show the clouds with the sun shaded, we can see some of the ripples that are being introduced into the sky that these powders are making visible to us. We still have great visibility. I mean, we're, we're better than 100 miles today, which is a glorious thing, especially after all the clouds yesterday. But with the aggressiveness that they're putting this, this particulate matter into the sky, we're probably going to lose our, our, our blue skies within the next two hours. This is my sky to the west with the uh, marking, sticking, persisting trails out that direction. A nice long one here with the moon, but we got a little mark right across this one. And it's curious how this trail ends at that trail. And it picks it up on the other side. And uh, we also have a, uh, an ending here where the trail, this long trail, marks the end or the southern extent of this one below. Again, we're out there, we're marking anomalies in the sky. The trails are very, very good at that. People just think they're regular contrails, they're regular jets, it's commercial traffic, la da 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 da. We can do it for decades and nobody's the wiser. That's changing. That's changing. We can see how long this one lasted. 
The air is so dry. None of this should be present. None of this should be here. Except it's cloud or trail after trail. And so, and so we're stuck with it for now. We have to make a we, this awareness has to grow so we can get this to end. It's the only way it's going to change with awareness. Every cloud in the sky to the north is a trail. Every single one. It's all, it's all artificial. All this activity I showed you uh, on satellite imagery, this is art to the north. Um, and it's just, considering how dry the air is, this is uh, uh, crazy how sticky these trails are. And the powders are all coming up this way. You gotta get out of the road. But it seems as if some canopy of clouds is, is just destined to be overhead uh, head today. You know, we're way, way, way too dry for any of this stuff to be sticking. Got a nice little, uh, little push to the north, like a little ripple of a curtain on this particular trail. That happens before it intersects this other series of trails. And this spot here, I've seen many times, would be worthy of a cross flight. Either from this point here, out along the angle that it's, uh, that it's uh, extending, or this way, but this is the more prominent point, or just straight through, straight through. And then if it's straight through, then it'll intersect maybe this powders, this powder here, as they're being pushed off to the north. But that's, uh, this is giving them data on how, whatever's happening here, the speed and the intensity of the event. Got three planes working the sky. This one is southwest. This little guy I don't know just yet. And another one coming in. Also from the west, and so I'll be curious to see this fate one. What his target? What what it, it this plane is interested in uh, geometrically in the in the trail that the Southwest flight just left. Let's see if we can't get it focused here. But it's a little business jet. It looks like a little Citation CJ2. But it's almost as if he's going to hit the very tip of this trail, at least the part of it that remains visible. Because it will not be long, and I'm going to be under totally uh, a thin overcast generated by, by chemtrails. All right, there he is. Just hit the tip of that trail perfectly. All right, this one, I'm going to intersect this plane at this gap. Let's see if he hits, goes through the center of the gap or just kisses the eastern end of the trail. It looks like to me it's going to be the eastern end of the trail, my side, the upper side. Pretty darn close, considering uh, considering uh, my my point of view from from this angle. So that's some precision. And this is what it's about. The trail down here. Let's push back in. Crosses also through a gap. So time after time. The anomalies that these trails leave, these kinks, these knots, these gaps, are for some reason then investigated by ensuing flights. He's just a little, uh, I would guess it's a Dassault Falcon, but uh, it's just kind of a guess. So there it is. And this is what time-lapse photography revealed to me. That these planes are up there continually investigating geometries that whatever anomalies are in the sky are revealing. Here's another one, just below the trees. We've watched this guy. We point, I pointed out that this little push right here might be a, a, something that they're investigating, or this knot, he came in actually below, where there was a gap in the trail, and now he's running a tangent between this little threesome. Plane after plane after plane. And we can see in this guy, these, little, these are little uplifts, little poof, like peaks, peaks. And you can see that in the way the trails are deforming. You would never know that these waves are there 
unless the trails were laid out to make them visible. And once you start looking at it, it just becomes stupidly simple. The trails just keep coming and coming and coming. There's a classic grid pattern off to the west. And uh, this is an interesting spot, as is this one. This plane just went across in the middle of that um, previous one. But what I wanted to see is this guy right in here. Notice how we have a cross trail here. We have a nice, it's spread off here. Tightens up, tightens up, gets very, very bright. And then immediately spreads once this other trail crosses it. I mean, immediately. So wherever we have a crossing, there's some change in behavior. Subtle, and sometimes it's very profound. But it exists. This one, not quite hit the fade. Where uh, this one didn't quite fade at that mark. But it's close, but what I'm seeing is the powders on this one are coming out to the right. Hit the trail, they come back together. And the, and the trail has integrity, or, or, or it's, it's rather uniform there. So the trails spread, the trails deform, the trails change behavior. This one, all convoluted in, the, in this the center of this mess right in here. So it also crosses across the brightest point. There's a nice little dip in this one here. This one rolls over where it's flat and it comes all upright and up to the upper right there. So they're just marking some anomalies. They're hunting this guy or they are directing the anomalies. I'm not quite sure which, but they are doing this in real time. There it is. It's barely 12.30 and we've lost our sunshine. All of this canopy of crap has come on in. It's lost. We've lost our sunshine. To the south, where the clouds overhead are headed, you can still see the trails being laid out very aggressively uh, east and west, and then when the anomalies show up in the, in the, in the trails and the cross plains come, you can see this rippling. There it is, right above in alignment with this brand new trail. There's the plane there, leaving it. Right across the previous trail. It's all about bringing in clouds right now. Killing our sunshine, which would have been so nice to have had today. Got an anomaly here. Back out so you can see its context. We've had three planes come through. One here, one across, and then this one's a little bit stronger. But they just continue to lay out, the, lay these trails across the sky, stealing our sunshine. Stealing our sunshine. But this rippling in here is pretty, pretty pronounced. All that, all that crap. So they're engineering the atmosphere at a micromanaging scale. They have to have the trails there to make all of this activity visible. Otherwise, you couldn't see the waves, you couldn't see the pulses, you couldn't see the engineering taking place. And as long as the populace remains ignorant that these are not regular contrails, they will continue to get away with this. They'll continue to get away with it. A little after 12.30 mountain time, and uh, the air in southern Colorado just layered, layered, layered with clouds. Their skies have almost uh, lost their entire blue cast. I'll look, look outside in a second and show you. But it's this little trough that's over Arizona edging into New Mexico with a little slight little ridge here that they seem to be working on. And see how this trough just fails. It begins to weaken and absorb into the northerly flow. We talked about, uh, let me, sh let me uh, pop over to the visible imagery here to show you what's happening. We have a northerly flow here. You can see the clouds shifting to the south. Off to the east side, we've got thunder showers and the storm lifting to the northeast. So this is the churn. This is the trough, this shape here that they are working on. So it appears as if they're weakening this twist. They're turning it into essentially a non-event. Just a little left, a little curvature, 
left in the jet stream, but eventually it's gone. So it looks like that's what they're weakening, working on, weakening presently. Here's the water vapor imagery. The trails earlier across uh, Arkansas and Oklahoma now beginning to be shunted off to the east. I want to go quickly into the models because this is the morning run. Earlier we were looking at the evening run from last night. This trough or this ridge off the west coast gets more pronounced into Monday morning. And this developing trough, remember we're talking about the possibility of a nor'easter. This is strengthening. This trough is sharpening with another slug of potent energy coming in from central Canada. And you can see the trough here swinging towards the northeast with a little curl here. This is, this is rhyming with Sandy. This is kind of similar. This would be Wednesday morning the 7th. Big trough off the west coast. Some rains into the Pacific Northwest, probably into Northern California as well. But here we go. Another closed low sitting over southern New England next Thursday morning. It does not linger like Sandy did as it progresses towards the Canadian Maritimes replaced by a cool surge of air. I want to go to the surface map, surface pressures. And uh, we're going to scan quickly. We'll watch this storm develop uh, into the southeast. There it is. There it begins to pop almost from nothing Tuesday morning. The 540 line here, this dark line, would be the rain snow line, roughly so. Snow line back on the sides. So we might see some snows. Hagerstown, Maryland. It may get some snow. Wheeling, West Virginia, on the backside of this storm is the 540 as the cold air gets wrapped in. But we're almost looking at another nor'easter come next Wednesday night, Thursday morning the 8th. It's going to be a quick mover. It's not going to move nearly as strong, but this has to be watched. This storm must be watched for those people looking to clean up, getting power restored. We might be looking at another event about 10 days after Sandy arrived, and then the West Coast, much, much cooler weather with the first snows possibly pushing into the bitter roots of, of Idaho, certainly the Cascades and Siskiyous, and then into the mountains in uh, northern and western Montana.